Okay, we're, we're back. We're picking up with question five. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Now let's assume that Exerbia has the potential with this, with this existence. Okay, so this is uh, telling us to put in our... Uh, our, uh, our uh, potential uh, GDP curve, which we already have. So we've done that, right? We've done that right here. Where is it? Right here. So we've already actually done that. So we're good to go there. So let's go back. And what we're, what we're being asked here is how will the new equilibrium alter the, the, the output, the price level, and employment? Assume that a prices in nominal wages are slow to adjust in the short run. Now what this means is that um, we're assuming that that if prices go up or down in the short run, wages will not will, will, will be slow to adjust. So it's going to affect. So if you, so if you have if if you if prices go up, we're assuming that in the short run everyone's wages aren't going to go up as well, which would, you know, make real wages the same. We're assuming that real wages are uh, not, uh, are, are uh, actually changing as the price changes. In other words, <laughs> when prices go up and your wage doesn't immediately adjust, then your buying power goes down, which means in reality, your real wages drop. Okay, so that's what we're we're assuming here. So if we look at it, we can see back on our graph right here, we can see that this point right here compared to our new equilibrium right here, price level has gone up, right? Output has gone up and we're operating at the potential of Exerbia's GDP. So we're right where we actually want to be now. Okay. So the answer that I actually had here was, let's see, um, let me go to the answers. Number five. Yeah. So they're closer to the, uh, they're, even if you didn't have the uh, potential uh, GDP line in, in there because the economy is now closer to the near vertical or steeper part of the uh, aggregate supply, you know that the real output is close to or or closer to or in this case equal to the economy's potential output, which means that they're operating at full potential GD, uh, GDP, which also means that the that the the unemployment rate is lowered to what we're calling the natural rate of unemployment. So that's important. When the economy is operating at its potential, we can say that that unemployment is down to its natural rate, which is usually somewhere between four and six percent, uh, depending on who you ask. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so now, where are we? We need to go to question, uh, let's go back over here. We need to go to the next question, which is what? Okay. If, okay, we're on a question uh, number six. If aggregate demand continues to rise, to continues to in Increase, which means the aggregate demand curve continues to shift out to the right. What type of inflation or uh, arises in overall price levels should economic policy makers in Exerbia be concerned about? Well, that's easy. If let's go back to our, our graph. If we continue to shift out then price levels be, become start to rise faster and uh, faster as the aggregate supply curve gets steeper and uh, steeper. And since this is the demand curve 
are shifting out, we call this demand pull, demand pull inflation, demand pull, okay? All righty, we're going, we're on question number seven now. So we're going to make a change. Now, let's assume that the government of Exerbia decided to significantly, significantly raise the tax on all carbon emissions. This causes an overall price increase in production, which results in aggregate supply decreasing by 30 at every level. So we need to plot our new aggregate supply and identify our new equilibrium. Okay, so let's go back to our graph over here. And if it's going to be lower at 30, it means we're going to be going from 600 to 570 and then 30 all the way down for each one and since I've already done now you'll have to type all of those in sorry about that but I'm gonna come back over here and use the one that I've already done right here and th these are 30 lower than the red the blue are 30 lower than the red at every level okay so let me just copy those out so you should know now that we're gonna have a shift in the supply and you should probably, hopefully, know that it's going to be to the left. Right. So we're going to come down here. Control C. Whoops. Did something wrong. Should be Control. Control. Oh, well, let me go back. Sorry about that. Let me hurry up. Okay. Copy. Control C. And then I needed to do Control V. I just didn't do that. So come back over here and go Control V. Okay. There we go. Now, we need to create this, this curve down here. So it's going to be a shift this way, right? Well, let's see. Okay, so we're going to right-click, select data, and we're going to add. And we're, what are we adding? We're adding our new aggregate supply. And then we're going to come here and click on our X or Series X values grid. And select those like so, and always in, in include this top here, the whole thing, okay? And then we're gonna come down and click on our Y series grid, select all those, and go oh, and then click on the down arrow, sorry, and then go okay, and go okay again, and there it is, shifted. There we go. Now where are we? We're right here, aren't we? Okay. So what's what has happened? Let's just look at this. So what's happened is the output has decreased and the price level has gone up bad news all around right so the question we're answering here is um, how will the new equilibrium equilibrium alter output the price level and employment assume that prices and nominal wages are slow to adjust in this sh short run so once again we're not we're assuming that nominal wages are not going to change quickly. So that would mean that we are now operating below our potential. So we're going to see a, a rise in unemployment. We're going to see a rise in price level and a and a uh, and less output right there okay and I think the way I answered that let me just jump back to see make sure I, don't, I, I didn't leave anything out um, right here so here's here's our new uh, equilibrium and output higher a price lower output uh, the price level went up to 150 and the output went down to 710 so yeah now, we're going to talk now about cost push inflation or what we can also call stagflation now. And the question that that answers, <laughs> we're, going, we're doing this kind of a backwards, aren't we? That that answers, number nine, right, is if aggregate supply continues to go down, if, the, if that curve con continues to shift to the left, what type of 
inflation should economic policy makers be worried about, and that is that is uh, cost push, right? Did I, did I say that right? Yeah, cost push. So, so because costs are going up, and this is this is sort of a more of a push, right? So the demand. Let me go back to our graph. The demand pulls, and you, you can think of supplies pushing, pushing the prices up. So this is cost push. This uh, uh, movement right here, with the supply curve shifting to the left, is cost push in. Inflation, or what we can call stagflation, because we have higher price levels and lower output simultaneously, which is the worst of both worlds. Okay, I'm going to answer a number ten on this video, and then um, uh, pick up number eleven on the on the next video. So let's jump back to where we are here, number ten. Actually, I, I want the uh, question before the answer. Okay, in this situation, do policy uh, makers who are advocating for deregulation of Exerbia's leading industries have a valid argument? Explain. Well, yes, they do, uh, and of course, that's going to depend on what they deregulate. Uh, you know, this could be many, many uh, things, but uh, but if you take away uh, regulations, if you deregulate, that tends to lower production cost. And in order to shift that supply curve back to the right, the aggregate supply back to the right, one thing you could, could do is lower production cost. And deregulation tends to uh, do that. The problem is a lot of these uh, regulations are very good. They, uh, you know, keep the air and the water and the water clean and taking them away could have a, a negative uh, what well, well, what we call negative externalities which we're going to get to in later chapters but anyway just in what we just in the very simple uh, theoretical uh, thinking then th the answer to this would be yes and the explanation that I gave here that's number 10, right? Yes, that deregulation could potentially lower production costs, which would shift the aggregate su supply back to the right. This would lower the price level and increase the level of output, thus bringing the economy closer to its potential G GDP. So I just wanted you to uh, think about that. And in the next video, I'm going to pick up with our next set of assumptions and questions 11, 12, 13, and 14.